All right, guys, to be honest, I can't believe it, but we are now in season five of Cobra Kai on Netflix. Is it any good? Does it hold up like the rest do, or is it starting to become a watered down mess? Let's talk about it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion for my Cobra Kai Season 5 Netflix review. And if this is your first time finding me and you happen to like the video, please give me that thumbs up and consider subscribing. All right, guys, so like I said, we are now in Season 5 in Cobra Kai. I cannot believe it. This thing just keeps on going. And I remember back in 2018 when this was being marketed and advertised on YouTube, I was saying, like, seriously? Hollywood, what are you doing? You have ran out of ideas. Y'all are crazy. This is the worst idea ever known to man. Nobody wants to see this. Nobody asked for it. This looks stupid. This looks corny. This looks campy. It is going to fail. But man, I checked it out, guys, and I was so blown away. I had so much fun. Of course, that's why we're here now in season five. And of course, it's not on YouTube anymore. It is now on Netflix, and I think it is going to be there for quite some time. And going into this, my expectations for season five were very high. Season four ended on a very high note. It was a tournament at the very end, and it was epic. Seriously, I really did enjoy this. I was at the edge of my seat on my couch like, yes, yes, just screaming like a crazy person. I really did have a great time, and I was going into season five expecting the same thing. Now, we do have some of the same creators, writers, and directors from the past that are involved in season five, so that's good for consistency. And they go by the names of John Hurwitz and also Hayden Slossenberg. And those names don't ring a bell off the top of my head, but if you just scroll down, you'll see Cobra Kai, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle, Blockers, American Reunion. These are all titles that I have enjoyed to some degree. And so that's great if you are looking forward to some consistency. And I also did react to the trailer on my channel because I was looking forward to that. And so if you do want to check that out, there is a link to that in the description box below for you to check out at your own leisure. But like I said, guys, I'm a big fan of Cobra Kai. I was really looking forward to this. I will go ahead and say like if you've just never seen Cobra Kai before and you're checking out this non-spoilery review, I will let you know that it is silly, it is goofy, it is corny. If you're not a silly person, if you're not a goofy person, if you are not a corny person, this is definitely not going to be for you. You're going to be saying to yourself, okay, this is cringe. I want to get out of here. Like, why don't y'all recommend this? This is definitely not for everybody. But if you are a fan of the original Karate Kid series, Karate Kid 1, 2, 3, and 4, and even maybe the reboot in 2010 with Jaden Smith, you know, I think you will be a fan of this show. But again, guys, if you're not a fan of the previous movies, and if you're not like a silly, corny person, this is definitely not for you. But before I get into all the nitty gritty, before I get into all my likes and dislikes, let me tell you exactly what this season is all about. For season five of Cobra Kai, Daniel's new ally turned housemate tests Amanda's patience, Miguel searches for his father in Mexico, and Terry starts to transform Cobra Kai. And of course, if you do not know who Terry is, Terry Silva, this is the gentleman right here in his villainous role. The man's real name in real life is Thomas Ian Griffith, and we're definitely going to be talking about him a little later on in this review. But the first thing that I did love, not like, but love about this season five Netflix series is things start to pick up right exactly where things left off in season four. We also see that he is teaming up with Chosen, who was the villain in Karate Kid Part 2. He is back as well, and there are also returning characters. So that's just a great thing right there where things just start to be picked up where they left off. And what I like about it is, while these are new stories that we're getting into, they don't linger on. We have 10 episodes in this season. Some of the episodes are shorter, coming around 28, 29, 30 minutes. Some are a little bit longer, coming in at 35 all the way up to 40 minutes, and that's just fine. But when we're getting these new stories, these new plot points, the story is not lingering at all from episodes one all the way to episode six or seven. These new stories are being capped off at the end of episode one and sometime at the end of episode two. So you're getting something fresh each episode while it's also being serialized as well. And I think they did a great job of balancing all of that. And what I like about this is whether it is returning characters older characters coming in for the first time or new characters that you've never seen before 
every character does have their own story. Every character does have their own arc and every character grows. And what I like about it is some of the established foundation characters, while you are rooting for them, you want, you may have a completely different mindset from them that you did in season four to now in season five. Some of them are wrong. Some of them are like, wait a minute, you're going about this the wrong way. I do want you to win and I am on your side, but you are out of your character right now and you need to get back to the person that I knew that I loved before that I can really root for because right now you're making a lot of questionable decisions and that is not just one character it is a few whether it is children in the show or the adults and I like how they split that up as well that's great too and I really like the way that Daniel LaRusso is being affected by his loss in season four as well. He does not necessarily know how to handle it. And it is really exciting to see him go throughout each of these episodes trying to find the best way to move forward. We also see, like I said, that he is not always making the best decisions. And we see how that is affecting his family and all of his friends and loved ones. And it's not a good thing, but does add a lot of tension and drama to the show, which it really needs sometimes aside from it being corny and goofy all the time and i'll get to that in a second as well but i have to say daniel is kind of coming across as a hater big time and he needs to be checked for that and i like that too and another great thing is this netflix series is still full of surprises you're probably saying to yourself okay hey we're in season five now how much new things can they introduce us to that doesn't seem like we've seen it before and they do that guys there are a number of surprises not only with characters popping up that we've never seen before but from the past and guys there are new alliances and new team-ups between certain characters that I never thought would happen in a million years and it makes it that much more entertaining and again fans all around the world that are into this show we keep saying okay y'all brought this character back how about you bring this character back from Karate Kid 1, 2, 3, 4 and they continue to do that and it's unpredictable as well even though you can possibly predict okay I bet this character is about to pop up right now you still don't know which way they are are going to pop up and how much weight they're going to have in the show and for it to be that mystery behind it again it just adds another value to the entertainment of this series and i loved it and another great thing guys they are expanding the lore they are expanding the story they are expanding the universe and i don't necessarily want to say exactly how because i don't want to spoil it for you if you don't want to be spoiled but there is still so much more story that they can tell in in future seasons and that is not even revealed at the end of the season when you get to about episode six or seven you're like oh okay i see where you're going with this and i like it and again it just opens up the door for more characters excuse me for more characters to come back from the past and that really does get me excited and guys i love not just expanding the universe moving forward but expanding it going back as well from characters that we know but just delving a little bit deeper into their backstory letting us get to know them a bit more than we did in the past and i love that the reenactment scenes are perfect we got a lot of that in season four and not only that with the new flashback scenes the older flashback scenes as well with the first four movies the way they edit that in seamlessly into modern day is perfect and it just makes me feel like this was planned 30 40 years ago and it is just now coming into fruition but guys we got to talk about the karate the karate what and in season four again the karate the fight and the choreography was dope as hell especially in that final confrontation at the tournament and it is good in season five as well my most favorite is all the fighting between the adults and they're there are a lot of adults fighting in this season five i mean we got terry civil well, i don't want to go down the list because we do have new characters we do have new senseis new masters old masters old senseis and these adults really be going at it and it's nice because i mean i really feel like a lot of them may really know martial arts the way everything is choreographed and the tempo and the pacing and the blocking and the hitting and all of that whether it's real or not i am convinced and i am entertained and i loved every bit of it there is a nice level of severity 
at the core of it to where I'm like, okay, somebody can actually get hurt. And especially in the end, I felt like, okay, like, are these characters going to die? And in previous seasons, we thought a character may die too. Like one example, when Miguel was kicked over the roof from Robbie, not the roof, but the railing, and he ended up in the hospital. But that was an accident that we thought that he may die. Like Robbie was trying to hit him, but he wasn't really trying to kill him. And this season five, I'm like, wait a minute, these characters may really be trying to kill each other and are they about to die? I was at the edge of my seat and to get to the answer, you just have to see for yourself. But I do love the severity of all that. And with the karate and all the fighting with the adults, it was much better than the kids. I will say that with the children, it was still good and it was entertaining. And some of the characters do step it up a bit, but it wasn't as good and it wasn't as polished as it was in season four. But I'll talk about that in a second. But again, the adults, they were fire. They was kicking a lot of ass. Now, we got to talk about Terry Silver. The guy from Karate Kid 3 coming back, Mr. Thomas Ian Griffith. This man right here was the best in the whole series to me. He is conniving, he is sinister, and he is also charming. I mean, he's just a great overall villain. And it's interesting, when I scroll down on his filmography right here and look at all of his work, of course it says The Karate Kid right there, or part three in 1989. We have the uh, Cobra Kai right here, 21, 21 and 2022. The last thing he was in was in 2007, The Kidnapping, a TV movie. I've never even heard of that before. And so it's been a while since he's had some work. And so I'm really Really glad that he got the phone call or the email or his agent hit him up or whatever and be like hey they're doing something with Cobra Kai you was in Co uh, Karate Kid 3 we want you to come back because he's doing a great job I mean the acting is great his story is great his karate his martial arts choreography all that is great and so I just got to give it up to Thomas Ian Griffith you know because I think he did a great job and like Daniel LaRusso and everybody else they did a great job too he just stole the show in my opinion and guys again I talked about the silliness and the corniness and all of that and it is still here like I was laughing my ass off with just some of the on the nose corny goofy and silliness that is in this show again if you do not like that type of stuff this show is not for you but I ate it all up I loved it I loved it I loved it for the most part. And while it's goofy, campy, and corny, and all of that stuff, they still do a great job of making it serious with the dramatic music and the score. And I'm just like, man, they are really just embracing this corny. It's going from corny, going to serious, just like that. And it's working very, very well and resonated with me too. But now guys, let me transition to some things that I really didn't care for in the series. I just talked about the good, but now let me talk about the bad. I will say that I thought episode episodes one through six or maybe episodes one through seven was absolutely perfect and episode the following three episodes the quality did kind of dip for me I started to get a bit annoyed a, just a tad bit with some of the corniness and the 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 silliness and the goofiness it was just a little bit much for me but it didn't ruin the show at all and I will have to say this there was kind of a plot hole or two when it comes to a character. So I was just kind of saying to myself, okay, what is your motivation? What is your end game? What was you trying to plan out? Because if this was it, this kind of just makes no sense. And y'all are not explaining something. Y'all are just wanting us to, you know, cover up our eyes and run with it. And I'm just kind of like, no, I want an explanation for this plot point right here that you didn't necessarily explain. And in episode six or seven, they did kind of tease you, like I said earlier, about expanding the universe. And I'm going to say to myself, oh my gosh, if y'all do this, this is going to be perfect because if y'all do this, then y'all can be able to do this, this, this right here. More stories to tell. That's perfect. However, at the ending, at the conclusion, it seemed like they kind of closed that book. And I was like, wait a minute, don't, don't tease me. Don't leave me up or leave me on and did not give me, you know, the main entree. You know, you only kind of gave me a little half of an appetizer. Now they could still go there, but it's just not as clear as it was earlier on in the season. But the main thing I will say is this is there were just a few moments of corniness you know there was just a little bit much and i will say that the conclusion of the the series the the finale it just was not as strong as it was in season four it was still good it just wasn't as strong i mean at the end of season four i was in there like yeah oh my god this is amazing i can't wait to season five 
And I can't wait to season six either. But I mean, it just, you know, I, I don't want to say anticlimactic because, you know, in the conclusion, there was some things that was badass. It just as a whole. And if I have to say the way that season four concluded and the way that season five concluded, I just have to give the trophy to season four. But season four was amazing to me. And again, guys, I'm not saying that season five is bad. It just it, it the, the first for six episodes, the first six, seven episodes were strong as hell. It was like I said, it was damn near perfect, but they just didn't execute the landing all the way in the last three episodes towards the end. And they could have just ironed it out a little bit more, but I still really did enjoy it. I will go ahead and give my rating for this at the very, very end. But for now, guys, that is just my opinion. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you did enjoy this video, please go ahead and give me the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, helping me reach my next milestone of 50,000 subscribers. And if you do subscribe to my channel, you will get movie reviews, spoiler movie reviews, series reviews like the hulu series and also taking bloodline on netflix a weekly movie news roundup show interviews and also me covering my uh t t well sometimes favorite tv shows uh each week like the mike tyson's uh, hulu series she hulk on disney plus Paw Book 3, Season 2 of Raising Canaan, Rap Shit, P-Valley. also have some initial reactions right there. But guys, if I had to rate Cobra Kai Season 5 out of a 1 out of 10, I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of a 10. Yes, an 8 out of 10. But guys, again, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.